Hi everybody, I'm Professor Adam Thiemann of the Enix Labs at Bar-Ilan University, and today I'm going to show you how to make article quality figures with PowerPoint. So to start, let's have a little motivation for this. Why not something like Visio, Illustrator, or Inkscape? They're more professional tools for making figures than PowerPoint. I mean, PowerPoint is for making slides. And the answer to this is yes. And I used Visio quite a bit in uh, the past. And I've also used Illustrator and Inkscape here and there. Well, I just want to tell you that Ill Illustrator and Inkscape, while they're very professional tools and they're perfect for doing what we want to do, they have a um, tough kind of learning curve to get into them. And they're harder to use and harder to um, get past that initial barrier of, learn of using them. So that's why I go to the kind of... Uh, common denominator, which is the Microsoft sort of tools. Um, Visio is a more professional tool than PowerPoint for sure for making figures, and it's really great. But not everyone has access to Visio. It's not usually delivered as part of the standard Office 365 package. Um, and it's just uh, not as convenient for sharing things and reusing them and so forth. Another thing is that I make a lot of slides in PowerPoint, and I want to make animations. And Visio, um, usually you copy over the entire figure, and then you can't make all kinds of animations very nicely. At some point, I stopped using Visio. I shifted over to PowerPoint, and I found out that it really um, answers almost all of my needs. Uh, I'll go over a few things that bother me in this uh, series. But in general, I've been using PowerPoint um, for the last few years, and it really does the job really well. I am able to make very professional-looking figures uh, that go into my papers and so forth. So the second question is, why um, do I want to even use something like that and make vectorized figures, which I'm going to discuss a lot here. So I just want to go over to um, a type of a, a, an image viewer and see what happens when I use vectorized versus non-vectorized figures. And when I'm talking about non-vectorized figures, I'm talking about the regular JPEGs, PNGs, those types of files that we are used to using from our non-kind of academic or professional lives. So here I have opened up um, a couple of figures that I have from one of our recent papers. And this is a vectorized figure. I made this in PowerPoint. And when I look at it, it has a lot of lines and a lot of writing and so forth. And it's a really nice thing because it has nothing to do, the quality has nothing to do with the size of the figure. So I can basically go and zoom into a word here. And you see that it, it it doesn't matter what the zoom is. I have a really nice uh, letter over here, and I have a really nice line, and I don't start seeing pixels and all kinds of problems like that. That is because these are saved in a vectorized type of file format, which is a PDF or SVG or EPS or one of those. But if I go and I look at, sometimes we need to add pictures. For, ex for instance, this uh, photograph of the chip here is obviously um, brought here in a JPEG. And same with the layout of the chip over here. And what happens is when I start like um, zooming in, you see that I start getting pixelization. And that's because this is some compressed type of a format like a JPEG. And the same will happen over here if I look at... Um, this layout over here. It's a bunch of pixels in the end and it really depends on the zoom. I can't really shy away from that because I have no way to get this uh, vectorized or this vectorized. There are pictures in the end, but at least I keep everything that is writing and so forth um, as a uh, as a um, as a PDF or a EPS or one of those formats to have it really nice. So that's why we're going to be discussing how to export vectorized figures from PowerPoint and actually from other tools that we use and then import them into LaTeX for um, uh, putting in our papers. So now let's go over to PowerPoint and we'll start a new PowerPoint presentation, just the default type of thing. And I get um, something like this and I click and I get a first slide. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to want a blank page. So I'll go over here to the slide uh, selector type thing, do a right click choose layout and in the layout I have as my default theme uh, there's something called a blank slide so that's the way I'm going to be wanting to work with a blank slide um, but you see I have kind of a messy screen and what I'm going to want to start doing is setting up how it looks so I have the quick access toolbar up here which is something that I use a lot I have lots of icons over here that I'm going to select them and use them and so forth well, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on it and hit show quick access toolbar below the ribbon. And then I have my quick access toolbar over here. It's much cleaner. I find it's uh, much better to use this way, even though it takes up 
a bit of the screen. If you want to take up less of the screen, one thing you can do is click over here and um, have the you know the ribbon that is not shown over here by show tabs only. You're going to usually want it, so then just go over to you know one of the ribbon tabs and do always show below ribbon, always show ribbon. So if you see, I have quite a few upper, um, icons over here on the quick access toolbar. And in general, I can get those things there by right clicking. And usually I have an add to quick access toolbar option, which will put an icon over here, but it can get messy um, rather quick. So the way that I'm going to go um, at the beginning of my uh, entire workflow, and this I have to do only once basically, is I'm going to go over to file and then um, options. And when under options, I have um, a bunch of things over here and one of them is quick access toolbar. So I'm going to click on that. And what you can see here is there are lots of different icons um, that do different commands over here. And they are actually categorized according to the different ribbons and so forth and so on. Or you can go to all commands and just go, you know, through this whole thing and look for the commands that you use all the time. And there's also something called a separator, which kind of adds a space. Um, between different areas if you want to organize things and what you're going to do over here is you're going to go and use the add button to get them over here and then you can reorder how they will appear on your toolbar and when you click OK you're going to get all the options that basically all the commands that you showed over here and I have for example save and save as undo and redo um, things with uh, master views format painter um, fonts, an area of fonts, an area of dealing with shapes, um, some area of arrange, which I'm going to be discussing later, and some areas of animations. And this will actually change according to how large you make your screen, what you can see and not. So this is something that takes time to tweak and get what you usually use a lot. Um, but what the nice thing is here is if I go back to this options and quick access toolbar is there is the option to export this. So I do export um, all customizations and it will save it in some sort of a file over here, which then if I format my computer or go to a new computer or I just want to share it with somebody else, then you can just load that uh, customizations file um, going to import customization file and what you had last time will appear on your new um, PowerPoint installation. So that's something that's really convenient and I'm going to be using these things a lot because I've gotten used to it um, and it's really worth setting it up so you have the, the things that you use most often up here. So that's one part of setting up your kind of workspace. So after organizing our quick access toolbar up here, I, I think just as a bit of methodology, when I'm making an article, what I want is to collect all my figures into one file. Instead of, I've seen a lot of people kind of make a different PowerPoint file for each and every one of their figures. It becomes messy inside your kind of file explorer and so forth. I just keep one file that has all my figures. When I want a, a new figure, I just make a new page over here. So a new slide, this will be figure two. You know, this will be figure three, etc. And then if I um, rearrange them, it doesn't really matter what the um, order of the, the uh, figures inside my article is because well, I'll show you in a second why, but I usually do try to keep them in order from the first, second, and third figure, and, and I can just move that around um, if necessary. But how do I actually um, make sure that I'm, uh, like find the correct figure and so forth? And when I'm gonna be using LaTeX, I wanna have a, ta a reference that's going to um, look at the figure and I wanna know what to call it and how to find it and how to update it and so forth and so on. So I'm gonna decide on the figure name. Let's say my figure is called my figure. I'm going to make a text box over over here so I selected this um, we could have gone to home and selected this little icon or under insert text box and then I'm gonna make a text box over here in the bottom right corner I usually make it and let's say my figure is called uh, is going to be called my figure usually like my figure dot PDF or something like that I don't want any um, capital letters you can turn that off in the options the automatic capitalization by the way so let's say this is called my figure okay don't call it figure one figure two because that may change according to how you edit your paper maybe if you take your um, figures and use them later on for your thesis or something give them a name that means something about the figure but put that name over here on the side if you need the whole slide you can also move that off the slide so you're not going to be saving it but I usually keep it here on the bottom right corner of my slide that's going to be the name of my figure that I'm going to use and when I export my figure I'm basically going to export it with the name my figure so I would do something like this I would go to save as 
um, you know, file save as. Okay, and then in the save as, I'm going to choose a, a PDF as the uh, format that I'm going to save things. So I want to save things in a, a vectorized format, and PDF is really the best and nicest one, and it goes into LaTeX really nicely. So I'm going to save it as PDF. Okay, I have to click on more options when I'm saving as PDF. We'll see this um, later. And I give it a name, and the name that I'm going to give it is that same my figure. So it's going to be myfigure.pdf. By the way, if I'm already showing you this, I'm going to hit options over here and only save the current slide. I also like to keep it PDF A compliant. I don't think that that's necessary, but some of the uh, different um, conferences and journals may have problems with some of the non-compliant type of PDFs that come out. So I usually keep that on there and I click OK and save. And what I'm going to get is uh, uh, this PDF over here, which is currently blank. But um, it, it's currently blank, but it has, uh, it says my figure over there, and it's only this one slide. The file is called myfigure.pdf. I'm going to be able to find it very well and so forth. I will show you later on how I organize that inside my LaTeX project. Okay, so um, now we have our slide, we have the slide name, and let's go on uh, starting to set up our um, PowerPoint presentation for making figures. And this is something that we're going to do and save for later on.